and welcome back everyone to Modern Minecraft 1.7 episode 21 I think attempt number four <laughs> yeah this has not been working out so well for me but uh, I think I finally got something I can make an episode out of here I am putting down some ender IO farming stations and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go over how those work and the structure I'm building I'm going to have four of these little farm squares, maximum size of the farming station with the octatic capacitors, or I assume that's the uh, maximum size. Oh, your inventory is full. Okay, well, that's something I'll set up in a minute. So by default, the farming station, if you don't have a capacitor in this slot, it will farm a radius of three blocks away, so it'd be for example, it'd farm this one, this one, and this one, but that's as far out as it would go. And they would just make a square like that. If you had a double layered capacitor, that would extend it another two blocks, and the octatic another two for a radius of seven. And you can tell it to plant different things in different corners, as I've done over here. I've got wheat, sugarcane, carrots, and potatoes all on the same farming station here. And these farming stations need power to run as well as a hoe to harvest the crops. For now, I'm probably going to pipe in stone hoes, but uh, I think there should be an essence hoe. Uh, what's it called? Essence infused? Right. Yes, essence infused hoe. This is unbreakable and it tills a 3x3 three three area. I, I didn't know that. That's interesting. So might try to get these later on. They're a little bit expensive with the extreme essence, which uh, the essence crops are something else I want to get farming here. So for now I've got them powered and they're running off a tesseract that's connected directly to my base. So now I need to create a place for them to store the items that they're harvesting. Uh, this one currently it's got empty seed slots so the stuff that's harvested have gone into these slots and once that fills up it'll start filling up these slots as we saw with the other farming station and then we can extract the stuff that's here and I think I'm going to put it into an ME system over here and then tie that into the system in my tower there is a way that you can connect up different logistics pipe systems over any distance and across dimensions and it's pretty easy to do and you can also connect logistics pipes to apply to logistics. So something that I've tried to make an episode on previously is uh, now I have this logistics pipe system over here at the the mob accelerator. I've got provider pipes on all the inventories and those are connected to a dimensional transceiver. And the pipe that does the magic is this thing, the Logistics Inventory System Connector, which requires this Logistics Item Card, which you make in pairs. Then you put the matching cards in the two separate pipes that you want to link together. And the other pipe is... I uh, don't have sap traveling on my bar. I normally keep it there. Right here. So this has the matching card, and I think if you hold shift, yeah, it'll show the ID of the cards. So the card that I showed before has the exact same ID. And if I were to not swap out my tools, come over here, I can request ender pearls and 6,000 ender pearls. And those are all in that cache over there. Right over there. I often forget about the Optifine zoom feature. I need to use that more. That's so useful. Right, well, I'm going to work on probably getting an ME drive for here. Maybe build on the structure a little bit more. Um, I must wonder if maybe I should have a space between this pad and this pad. I don't know. I'll work on that on my own. And when I've made some progress, I'll come back. Okay, this is kind of what I'm talking about. I just made a uh, sort of hallway here in between these, and I'll need to expand this outward a little bit. And 
started on what will be the next level just so I have everything lined up. So the ceiling here is made of half slabs and probably gonna have some kind of lamps. Um, what were they? Like these things. Uh, I like these experience essence lamps that they have a nice green color that I think would suit this building very well. So I'm gonna have these replacing the slabs every once in a while. And this is three blocks high, so it's plenty of room for the sugar cane to grow. And then on top of the slabs, we have the dirt for the next farm. And I hadn't thought about the conduits that will need to be connected to the farming stations. Hmm. Well, I could either raise this up one level, or I guess I could just accept the fact that the conduits will have to replace some of the half slabs and replace them with... Uh, conduit facades just have like a row of full blocks. I don't think that looked too bad. Other than that, I think this is coming along pretty well and I'm gonna have a staircase here that goes up to the next level and I suppose that's actually why I was starting on the next level. So the area of effect enchantment, uh, well it's called area miner now, it has kind of an interesting effect with axes, and I'm not sure if I want to try to fix this or just accept it. It works on leaves. So that's a that's a little bit weird. Oh, and it, it gets the wood blocks whenever you use it like that. I don't, I don't know if I want to just let that happen or try to fix it as a bug. I'm not sure. The area miner enchantment was... Uh, a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. Alright, so how do I want to do the stairs here? So I've got some regular wood planks, which is what I've got down there. So let's see, maybe... I don't know how much room we'll have exactly. I should probably try to get the stairs centered somewhat. If that's possible. So how much is this? Five blocks? So if I were to count out five blocks, actually I need to start here. And then start the stairs there. Would you line up correctly? Pretty close. It's kind of off by one block, but we could just say that this one counts. And then it's perfectly even. And... Actually, I don't know what I'm going to be using here. I might try a slope, just see how it looks. Well, I thought a slope might look kind of unnatural for this kind of structure, and I guess we'll have to wait until the full thing is built to know for sure, but I think it actually looks pretty good. Uh, I think it actually suits uh, this building to have like a wooden ramp that goes up to the next level. Not bad. Right, I'm liking the way this building is looking so far. I'm thinking later I might try replacing these arches that are made with stairs and uh, slabs with... Uh, like a slope here and if you could do a collapsible platform upside down... That might look pretty good. I might try that later, but for now this will do. Got an energy conduit here. Pulls up power from the one below and sends it along here up to the farming station. And I've got these disguised with the conduit facades. Painted with the smooth oak wood planks. So they blend in perfectly with the surroundings. And I'm thinking this farm will be for the essence crops. I'm going to have a whole farm devoted to these because you need a lot of... <laughs> the stuff that you get from them. The essence dust. Right. And that hoe has gone through a lot of durability already. I considered making a diamond one. I probably should have. I think I have like four to five hundred diamonds right now. Oh, I didn't put any water up here yet. Right. Uh, I've got four buckets. Perfect. I need exactly four buckets. Alright, so let's see. It's three. Three away. 
Right. I think this is the best way to place the water for... for the farming station max size. A single bucket would never be able to cover this area. I guess you could also have sprinklers and maybe that would increase growth. I don't know if that works on magical crops though. I don't think it does. I don't even know if these things need water. I would assume they do. Technically, I could probably build this whole thing without water. Stuff would grow slower, but it would grow. Right, just put the buckets back. You can have your seeds back. Plant those for me. All right, looking good. And no, I'm not going to put any walls on this structure. It's all going to be pretty much open. Just these little supporting columns and arches. Don't really have to worry about mobs spawning around here since I've got Magnum Torch protection. I don't actually know how far it extends. I kind of thought I would have some mobs attacking me around here. Huh. Where did this water come from? Strange. Alright, so you're doing your job. You're saying no seeds. That's because you've already planted all the seeds there. You can. Okay, so I'm also going to need to lay some item conduits. And how am I doing on item conduits? I think I'm a bit low. Yeah use some more item conduits. I think those require pulsating nuggets. Let's see, how many conduit binders do I have? 1,000? Okay. So let's say item conduit. And I can auto-craft the pulsating nuggets. So let's go ahead and do 10 sets. And that should send the pulsating iron over here. Make the nuggets. Yeah, there we go. That'll do for now. So, let's see. Every farming station is going to need to be connected to item conduits. So I can just go around and place all the conduits like so. And just wherever there's an energy conduit, I guess there will be an item conduit as well. And I still haven't made the the stuff I need for the ME system for this building. So I guess I'll do that after I place these conduits. Alright, I've had some trouble deciding where to set up the ME system. I think I'm just going to do it right here, basically. <laughs> uh, maybe I could mirror it on the opposite side for symmetry purposes if I want to, but it's not going to bother me that much. So now I can come over here with these cable facades, and I can't remember how you do this. Do you put the facade on and then the terminal? Like that? Yeah. Okay. So now I can just cover this up. I made more than I needed, apparently. Is there any way to, like, uncraft these or change them into something else now? Okay. Alright, so let's... Test it out. I can put stuff in it. I can take stuff out. It works. It looks pretty out of place here, I've got to admit. wonder if it'd be better if it was embedded in that column. Probably not, but I can try it. It would help if I had a pickaxe where I thought I had a pickaxe. Whoops. Well, that wasn't what I intended to do, but it worked, I guess. I used the wrong pickaxe. <laughs> Alright, so you go here. Then cable, then facade, then the terminal. I made a crafting terminal. Don't know why. Probably should have just made a regular terminal. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. That just looks weird. 
we're going to do it this way. Okay, so you are all powered and nothing is currently set to send stuff into the system. What would be the best way to do that? Typically what you would do is you'd have an import bus on a chest or something like that. I guess that would work. Let's see, do I have a chest in here? Yeah, I do. I have a diamond chest. That'll work. So let's see, let's just mm, put it in the middle here. Then I could have the import bus wherever, I suppose. Just have it on that side. Of course, I don't have an import bus at the moment, so I'll need to go make one. Okay, I'm making a whole stack of logic processors here. You need a lot of logic processors. So a stack is a good place to start, but I'm probably going to need a lot more. Especially if I plan on adding any more storage cells. So let's see, put that back in the system. Don't know how I ran out of annihilation cores, but not formation cores. Oh, well it only requires annihilation cores, right. That makes sense because it's importing stuff, so it's annihilating it, right. Got it. Okay, and just fall down one of the many holes that I've made for convenience. So I can put that there. And there's some ways you can upgrade this. Let's see, that is online, right? You can put some upgrades over here to make it run faster, pull stacks out of time, stuff like that. So let's see, you need to be connected via item conduits. Okay, and now I just have to set up all the farming stations to extract their stuff. Extract, always active. Let's see, can you disable a farming station? Yeah, you can disable a farming station with redstone. That's something else I'm considering, having them so that it's possible to disable them somehow. Maybe if... Uh, what they're farming surpasses a certain amount because uh, there are level emitters in AE2 that will emit a redstone signal if you have more than a certain number, uh, more than a specified number of some item. So let's see, is this working? No, you are not extracting your stuff, but why? Item conduit connection. Oh, I bet I have the item conduit on the chest set up incorrectly. Yes, there we go. It's now putting stuff into the chest, but is it importing it? It is. Very slowly, though. I'm going to need to upgrade that. So, let's see. So, you can type in import, and that will show you what you can put on the import bus. So, capacity card... Um, I think that's so you can add more items in here, like to whitelist them. Fuzzy card, redstone card, acceleration card. These are what I want. Okay, so I'm going to make some of those, I suppose. Oh, actually it seems like it's sped up quite a bit. So maybe it won't be an issue. I'll just have to keep an eye on it. If not, it, I don't think it'd be too hard to make a couple acceleration cards. Okay, so you also need to be set up the same way. Extract always. Which, unfortunately, uh, you don't have anything to extract yet. And up here, you need to do the same thing. You have some stuff that you could output. Uh, it's going to be hard to access that. This is the kind of situation where I wish I had the morph mod. But sadly I don't. Well that works. Extract always. Okay, now I can just replace that and these. There we go, off to a good start. Uh, let's actually move these so it will plant them. Instead of just having them sit around.
All right, and I can access everything the farm has harvested from right here, and I could put a terminal anywhere. It doesn't have to be close to the ME drive. It just has to be connected. Now I guess the last step would be to connect the ME network to my logistics pipe network so I can access all, the, all this stuff from over there. All right, I can't really remember what the last thing I talked about was because I've been at this a while, but uh, I believe I've got everything set up. I've got it so that I can access anything that's in the ME system here from my tower, but I can't put anything back into here. It's a one-way trip if I pull anything out. But I could probably change that if I wanted to. All right, so we got a basic logistics pipes network here. We got another inventory system co uh, connector, and I've got another one of these on the transceiver of my base. So I've got two of these connected to it now. Here I've got a provider pipe attached to the interface. This is what it lets me request items from my tower. In other words, it allows the farming building to provide items. Then I've got a supplier pipe here, and it sits up pretty good on iron. I, I went in and just told it to do iron hose so that it doesn't have to replace them quite as often. Eh, it'd probably be best to do, to do stone, but whatever. So I'm supplying four iron hose this chest, and I have a lot of hose at the moment because it took me a while to get the system working correctly. I was originally trying to put them all in the same chest, but that wasn't working out, so splitting it, the uh, receiving chest and the hoe chest was best. So this one extracts items, and to prevent it from putting the hose in here, I've got an item filter here that blacklists iron hose. And I've got the import bus here, had to move that over one spot. And I had to move the transceiver as well. And I think that pretty much explains the system. So let's get these excess hose out of here. And just dump them into this chest so it'll be stocked for a while. And now I just need to change the other farming station so that they can receive the hoe. So for the item conduits, I want to do in and out, and that should automatically re re provide it with a hoe. Okay, good. So let's go upstairs and maybe get rid of the darkness. It's still dark in this building because I don't have any lights in it. Gonna have to work on that. Uh-oh. Uh, why did you... I don't know why it dropped all the stuff on the ground. Was it not extracting the items from its inventory as quickly as it should have? That could be what happened. And if that's the case, I don't think it'll be a problem after this, since it'll, it'll constantly have a supply of hose for the foreseeable future. Okay. And going to break you again. In and out. And there we go. And it'll hold that one piece of dirt that I had to replace in just a moment or so. And this will get me lots of essence crops. I may want to put a chunk loader or world anchor over here so that the stuff is running overnight for me. And out of curiosity, how much power are we using? Uh, maybe a couple hundred? That's not too bad. I mean, my reactor can produce 7.3k, so... I'm not too concerned. Oh, and it looks like it uh, may have just come on. No, that wouldn't have been the case. I don't know. I haven't checked my reactor in a while. It may have been running for quite a while. Uh, I don't know if I've shown this program recently. Probably not. I made it display the amount of RF being produced. And I also made it 
displayed fuel, fuel usage in millibuckets per tick. And I also converted that to buckets per hour. So I have an ideal of how many ingots I would need to run the thing overnight. Not that it really matters since I've got 4,000 yellowite, something like that. And reactivity, that's kind of like fuel efficiency, higher is better. And it's pretty low when it's not producing a large amount of RF. And actually, I wonder, is having my jetpack on affecting this value? Oh yeah, it was. Because I was hovering, it was actually, that was probably where most of the energy usage came from. Whoops. Okay, so these farms are not actually using that much. Barely anything, I would guess. Um, if looking at them as any indicator, it looks like they're using 93 RF twice a second. Something like that. So it's not bad. I wonder, can I? No, I can't click on that side. So we've got automated sugarcane, carrots, potatoes, wheat, fluffy puffs, and essence. So this is a good start, and this building, of course, will be able to stack on the floors as high as I need them. Um, haven't really thought about stairs to the next level. I guess I could put the stairs to the third level here, going up. That'd probably be good. I don't know, I'll just have to mess around with this off-camera. I've shown how the design works, so I think this is a good episode. I stayed focused on one thing for a change. It only took me four attempts to make this episode. It was originally supposed to come out last Friday, or a couple days ago, whenever this video goes up, probably Monday. So sorry about that, but uh, if the video isn't up to quality standards, I, I don't release it. So thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you're not already subscribed, you can do so if you want to, so you can keep up with what I'm doing. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.